I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places. I'm Jason Stanton, and this is the eighth post for Bible readers. As we continue to think about habit formation, I want you to remember what we've talked about already this week. To succeed tomorrow, we need to prepare today. So we set it out the night before. And number two, we talked yesterday about habit stacking. Neurons in our brain that fire together, wire together. So as we try to rewire our brains with a new habit, that may happen best by connecting this new effort of Bible reading with something we already do, or something we already find pleasurable. I asked you to journal about habits that are stacked in your life. Aren't our brains interesting? So today, now that you've identified some examples of how you stack habits, how when you do this thing, you usually are then drawn to do that thing too, I want you to start asking yourself, why? Why do I do that? What's behind that habit? Yesterday, I made an example of how some of us, when we're in the living room, we, we just turn on the TV, even if we're not much interested in what is on. What's that about? I've known many smokers that want to quit. But what I'm asking today is, how did that habit start to begin with? Coffee, social drinking, allowing social media to constantly throughout the day interrupt your day. Many of our habits, most of our worst habits, are grounded in a desire to connect with other people. So much like we're going to try to use the principle of neurons that fire together, wire together to our own benefit by connecting Bible reading to something pleasurable, we're also going to use our deep desire to connect with others to help us form this new habit. If social connection can make us drink and smoke and ignore the person in front of us so that we catch the latest tweet or post, then why not use our desire for social connection to grow closer to God and closer to God's people? Instead of trying to read every day on our own, Lone Ranger types, we will read every day with me and the other 150 or so other people who are reading along And maybe we someday will be able to connect at church or in person somehow. I'm not saying everyone needs to react or respond to the video I post every day, but those engagements, our questions, our ideas will deepen this experience in a way that makes it more likely that we social creatures will succeed. In the very first post of Bible Readers, I said our goals are to connect with God and each other by reading our Bibles. I also asked on that first day about your why. Why do you want to become a Bible reader? Adding this habit to your already busy life. I hope it's grounded in a desire to connect. So the assignment today is read eight minutes of the Gospel of Luke, picking up where you left off. And I should say, if we have any speed readers out there who are nearing completion of Luke, if you get done with Luke, move into the sequel, the Acts of the Apostles. I know in your Bible, the Gospel of John somehow snuck in between Luke and Acts, but Luke and Acts are written by the same author, and one picks up where the other leaves off. So go ahead and move into Acts if you finish. Most of us still have plenty of Luke to go. I know I do. And after reading your eight minutes, here's your journal prompt. When have you been successful in forming a new habit? What are some specific things you did to succeed? And think about a bad habit you have. How is that formed? What is behind that habit? Seeing how habits, both good and bad, have formed in your life before is going to help you now as you try to form a new one. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.